Uh, Mr. President, I rise today to join my colleagues because this week marks the one-year anniversary of Senator McCain's casting the deciding vote against the health care repeal legislation. I too voted against that legislation, as I did a number of very partisan efforts by President Trump and congressional Republicans. I did so because the people of Wisconsin did not send me to Washington to take people's health care coverage away. They have consistently sent a clear message that they want us to work across the party aisle to make things better and not worse. As I have said throughout last year's debate and to this day, the people of Wisconsin want both parties in Congress to work together to make things better by stabilizing the health insurance market, making health care more affordable, and taking on the rising prescription drug crisis. I strongly believe that if both parties look past the partisan debate in Washington, we can find common ground on solutions that work for the American people. Each and every one of the health care repeal bills that were pushed by the President and Congressional Republicans faced opposition by the American people because they would have done all, uh, all of them would have done the same thing, take health care coverage away from millions of Americans and make people pay more for less care. They would have gutted protections for those with pre-existing conditions. They would have forced older adults to pay an age tax. They would have cut benefits for Medicaid for most, uh, our most vulnerable people like senior citizens and even our veterans. Put simply, this would have taken us back to the days when insurance companies set the rules. Wisconsin, uh, Wisconsin families and families across our entire country let their voices be heard to the Congress. Like Chelsea from Seymour, Wisconsin, whose daughter Zoe was born with a congenital heart de defect and had to have open heart surgery within five days of her birth. Chelsea wrote to me and said, I'm pleading with you as a mother to fight for the kids in Wisconsin with pre-existing health conditions. So together, we fought to protect the guaranteed health care protections that people depend on. Together, we fought the repeal plans to cut and cap Medicaid, putting care at risk for everyone who depends on it, from a loved one who depends on Medicaid for nursing care to a disabled child who relies on Medicaid funding at school. And together, we fought repeal plans that would increase the number of uninsured Americans. But even defeating the legislation, uh, legislative efforts uh, that would have made things worse for our families didn't end the threat to the American people. President Trump has been trying to do what congressional Republicans couldn't. He has been sabotaging our health care system by undermining the guaranteed health uh, protections and access to affordable care. He ended the critical cost-sharing uh, reduction payments that make health care more affordable for almost 90,000 Wisconsinites. His administration again slashed funding to states for outreach efforts to help more people sign up for health care. Trusted navigator programs like those in Wisconsin have had their funding cut by nearly 90 percent in the last two years. This will mean fewer people in rural Wisconsin uh, will receive the support they need to obtain affordable coverage. And President Trump's sabotage of the health care market has created severe instability and already contributed to a 36 percent premium spike in Wisconsin this year. But the, the, this damage is not enough for Trump's administration, as it has also proposed a plan to allow insurance companies to sell what we call junk plans that could increase costs and reduce access to quality coverage for millions of Americans. 
harm people with pre-existing health conditions, and force premium increases on older adults. These junk plans once again let big insurance companies write the rules and could exclude basic care, including hospitalization, prescription drugs, mental health services, substance abuse treatment, and maternity care. Mr. President, it still does not end here. Legislative repeal efforts and executive branch sabotage have now moved to the judicial branch. Wisconsin's governor and attorney general have sued to strike down the entire Affordable Care Act last month. And last month, the Trump administration supported this repeal effort by going to court to take away guaranteed protections and raise costs for Americans with pre-existing conditions. If the lawsuit succeeds, insurance companies will once again be able to discriminate against people with pre-existing conditions by denying them coverage or charging exorbitant premiums. President Trump is threatening guaranteed and affordable health care coverage for more than 133 million Americans and over 2 million Wisconsinites with pre-existing conditions. In fact, as a Kaiser Health report made clear last week, if the Affordable Care Act's protections for people with pre-existing medical conditions are struck down in court, Wisconsin is among a number of states that has the most to lose. According to Kaiser, one out of every four Wisconsinites has a pre-existing condition, and they cannot afford to have the health care they depend on threatened. When I was a child, I was branded with the words pre-existing condition after a serious childhood illness. So I am going to continue fighting to make sure that no family would have to choose between helping their child get better or going bankrupt. Again, the people of Wisconsin did not send me to Washington to take people's health care away, and I will continue my fight against these relentless efforts to make things worse for Wisconsin families. This issue is personal to me, and I know it's very personal to the individuals and families in Wisconsin. No parent, no grandparent, no foster parent should lay awake at night wondering if the health care they have for their child today will be there tomorrow. And that's why I will continue my work to protect it. Last year, the American people sent a loud message to Washington. I heard it. And they are sending the same simple message today. Protect our care. I yield, Mr. President. Mr. President. The Assistant Democratic Leader. Mr. President, it's interesting. I listened to my colleague from